Hey, welcome back to Buckeye Barbecue. It's not quite November yet, but I want to do a couple of videos and do turkeys a couple of different ways. So I'm going to do a turkey and this time I'm going to hang it in the pit barrel cooker. Uh, so we're going to brine it first and then hang it in the pit barrel cooker. I am guessing it'll take eh, three to five hours depending on the temperature of the cooker. And uh, I think we'll have a pretty good bird. So this will be the first of a couple of uh, turkey videos that we do. And as usual, thanks for joining me here at Buckeye Barbecue. And if you, you like uh, what you're seeing in spite of the videography, uh, please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to the channel. But let's get started on this uh, bird. So we're going to use this brining bucket. I've actually never used one before, but it does have some pretty cool features for brining turkeys and chickens and things like that. So I'll show you that as we uh, get it ready. Uh, the other thing we're going to use is how to barbecue right uh, Malcolm's bird brine. Uh, I really like how to bar barbecue right products. I think this one will be just as good as everything else. So we're going to use that to brine our turkey. So we'll get started with creating the brine now. So I'm just going to bring some water to a simmer and I'm going to take my bird brine and go ahead and add one cup and I'm just really following the instructions on the brine and I'm just gonna stir that as the water heats up just to get some of the uh, spices in there to dissolve a little bit I'm not gonna bring this to a full-blown boil and of course not everything in there will dissolve with the peppercorns and some of the other things uh, but uh, some of the salt and things like that will dissolve a little bit and uh, I think that'll make for a better brine. So I'm not going to do this all on camera. I'm just going to stir this around, let it simmer for a few minutes and then let it cool off. So we'll be back. Okay, so a couple of things that I did here that uh, are worth noting. So first of all, you can brine this straight in the bucket. That's no problem at all, but you do have to keep it cold. So it's got to be in the refrigerator, uh, pack it with ice, put it in a cooler with ice around it, something, but it, it's got to remain cold to remain safe. I am going to pack it with ice. So I'm going to use a bag for uh, my brine and I'm going to put the turkey down in it. Now you don't have to use a bag at all, but because I want to use ice, uh, we're at our camp and I don't have a lot of refrigerator space. Um, I've got ice below the bag, maybe about three inches worth of ice. Um, so I'm gonna drop the turkey straight down in the bag. And this is a really pretty bird. I haven't used this company before, but I got it from a place called uh, Fossil Farms. Um, I read some good uh, reviews online about them, and uh, so I thought I'd give them a try. Uh, so we have our bird in there. And by the way, if you just buy a, you know, a, a, a Purdue bird or one of the supermarket birds, a lot of times those are already brined. You'll you'll see them say something like in a percentage solution or something like that. Uh, so you don't want to use those. You want to use a bird that has not been brined. A fresh bird so if you're gonna do a, a brining don't get one that's already been brined all right now that the bird is in there we're gonna take our brining solution that we made and just dump it in and by the way I cooled this off completely I actually added ice to it you don't want to pour hot brine on your bird there we go and now I'm just going to add another half gallon of water. This takes about a gallon of water to do this. So I'm using filtered water. And we're going to dump that right on top of our bird. All right, and you do need them all the way covered. So if you find that isn't enough, just add a little more water. And 
this is not going to be enough either. The ice in the top to raise that water level. There we go. And I might add a little more water just to cover that. But at this point, you are going to tie your bag up or if you're not using a bag, you can just put the brining lid on top. And what this does is you put it in through uh, in the grooves and then twist it and it will keep the whole bird or whatever you're brining underwater, which is what you wanna do. So I am actually going to squeeze this bag good even tie it off so it doesn't come undone and then I will take my lid put it down in the grooves and twist it and I'm barely gonna be able to get in the top one but it worked actually worked out pretty well um, now I'm going to cover this with ice on top which is not handy so i won't do that on camera but after i do that i'll use my lid and cover it up uh, for a bird less than uh, 12 pounds you probably want to go 6 to 12 hours at a minimum for a bigger bird more than 12 pounds you definitely want to go 24 hours in the brine so again got to keep it cold and you got to get it submerged in the brine and this is going to do wonders for our hanging pit barrel cooked bird. So we will bring you back when we're getting it ready for the cooker. So here is our bird after brining. Now standard for a turkey is about one hour of brining for every pound of turkey. This is a little bit shy of 12 pounds worth of turkey. So this uh, brined actually a little more than 12 hours, almost 13 hours. So I didn't, uh, I didn't film taking it out of the, the brining bucket, but it uh, is no, no mystery there. Just uh, pulled it out of the bucket, dumped the liquid. And, and then something really important, I did dry it off really well uh, all around the outside, including the cavity. Uh, cavity is totally empty. Uh, now the bird is going to go in the refrigerator until I'm ready to cook it, which is probably going to be in five or six hours. And I'm just going to put it in there uncovered on the bottom shelf on this cookie sheet. And that will allow the skin to dry out a little bit. It will help it crisp up or at least not be rubbery when it's cooked. So we will bring you back when we get the pit barrel lit and get ready to put this turkey on. Okay, so we're gonna get the pit barrel cooker lit for this turkey. Uh, the way I'm lighting the pit barrel cooker today um, is the way I would light any drum smoker for a, uh, a longer and slower cook. Um, so I've got two tumbleweeds on one side of the charcoal basket. I don't know if you can see them on the camera or not, but I've got them just uh, together on one side and I'm gonna light them both. I'll leave the lid open and, and let it catch for a few minutes. And that'll uh, allow the fire to spread slowly across the charcoal basket. It'll also give me the freedom to move the turkey around to hotter or cooler spots as the cook goes on. So a lot of times this is the way I will light uh, either one of my uh, barrel smokers. So I'm just going to light it. All right, so that is going nicely, so we'll let it catch. I'll go ahead and add the other piece of rebar here and just watch the fire. And as the coals start to light around those tumbleweeds, I'll go ahead and put the lid on it and let the temperature stabilize. And in the meantime, we will get the turkey ready and we'll bring you back for that. Okay, so we're gonna get our bird all ready to go. It has been in the refrigerator for probably about six hours uncovered, help dry that skin out so we don't get rubbery skin. Uh, the pit barrel cooker is lit and it is coming to temperature. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some olive oil 
just a little bit, don't need much at all. I actually don't use binders all that much, but since this has been in the skin or in the uh, refrigerator, trying to dry it out, we're just gonna try to get a little olive oil on it just to protect it a little bit from the heat. Try to get a nice uh, color on it during the cook. So again, just a little bit of oil, not a lot at all. And then I'm gonna use uh, something I really like, uh, How to Barbecue Wright's King Craw, Malcolm's King Craw seasoning. It's a Cajun seasoning, not super strong, but some really nice flavors, and it's great on poultry. So that's what I'm gonna do here today with this bird. So we're just gonna shake a little bit on. Now, I'm not gonna use a lot here. Um, for one reason, it was brined. So we already got some salt infused in the meat and we don't want it to be overly salty. And some people get up under the skin with seasoning and, and you can do that. I, I would rather inject it, but I don't have my injector here. I don't find that, that I like the skin to be remain intact. I don't wanna take a chance on loosening it or uh, breaking it at all. So I don't do that a lot, but you certainly could. You do you. And this would be fine with uh, any kind of barbecue rub, anything you'd put on chicken. Uh, go ahead and put on this. Um, salt and pepper only would be fine, or a salt, pepper, garlic mixture would be good. There we go. The other thing I'm gonna do is tuck the wings behind it so they are not hanging out. They will burn if they're hanging out on their own. You don't want that. So, trying to keep one hand clean here so it makes it a little more difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over. We still have some of our brine on there, so I'll clean that off a little bit. We want the whole thing to be pretty, so we use just a little bit more olive oil on the back. And then we'll grab our seasoning, do the back side. You won't eat much of this except for the wings. I like a turkey wing and the thighs, which are, a lot of it is, the meat is back here on the back side. All right, I am gonna leave it at that. Maybe do the top here a little bit. And now I am gonna be hanging this in the pit barrel cooker. So I'll turn this back over in order to get the, the hook in it to hang it. And I definitely wanna make sure any seasoning I rubbed off, I replace. There we go. Now I, people do this different ways. Some people like to hang it so the ends of the legs are at the top. Other people like to hang it uh, the other way. I personally like to hang it so the ends of the legs, the thighs and the, and the uh, legs are hanging down. They are the dark meat, they can take more heat they can cook to a higher temperature and still be outstanding. So this is the way I like to do it. Um, but again, I've seen people do it both ways. Their turkeys look great too. So uh, you do you, but this is the way I prefer to do it. And it is ready to go on the cooker. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna check the temperature of the, uh, of the cooker and we will bring you back when we put it on. See you in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna get this bird on the pit barrel cooker. I did think of uh, a few things that I should have mentioned, but I'll do so now. So first of all, I dropped about, uh, I don't know, a handful, maybe eight or 10 small apple chips. I love apple with, uh, with poultry. So that is uh, on top of the charcoal in various places, so it will ignite as the uh, charcoal gets to it. Um, also inserted my meter probe thermometer that will measure the ambient temperature as well as the temperature of the bird. So sorry about the extraneous noise, some construction going on. Um, so I'll be monitoring using the meter app. I may include a screenshot or two in the video, not sure yet. So this is ready to go. 
Uh, so we're gonna get the lid closed so we don't spike too much in temperature and we'll check on it in probably an hour and just monitor our temperature and make sure we get it stabilized. So the turkey has been on just shy of two hours. It's around 310 degrees inside the pit barrel and the internal temperature of the turkey is right now just shy of 120, I think it's 117. So cook is going as planned, uh, probably another uh, 75 to 90 minutes of cook time, I'm guessing. Um, one thing about the pit barrel cooker, the, uh, the smoke you see coming out of it, if you can see it on the video, there's quite a bit uh, that you can see uh, in person anyway. Um, a lot of that is from the juices of the turkey dripping on the coals. The basket in the pit barrel is wide open, so everything is dripping on the hot coals, which really does add to a lot of flavor. Uh, so we're gonna keep monitoring this uh, probably around 125 or 130 i'm gonna check on it uh, i may bring you back for that and i might spin the turkey around and just make sure it's in a good spot inside the kettle uh, until then uh, we'll just uh, keep watching the temperature okay we're just shy of 150 degrees internal and i just want to take a look at this and show it on the camera um, real quick I don't want the temperature to spike but I do want to take a look and show it to you well, I hope you can see that I hope you can see the color it looks so good juice is just dripping on the hot coals looks great So we're going to get it back so our temperature doesn't spike, uh, but I'm really happy with this right now. Hopefully it tastes as good as it looks, I guess we will see. So we're going to let it go up another 15 degrees. Whenever I use the meter probe, uh, I do like them, they're reasonably accurate. I, I've had good luck with them uh, once I sort of figured out some of their tricks, uh, but I always check it with uh, my Thermapen. Uh, especially with poultry you don't want to be off by five or six degrees in, in poultry so uh, once it hits uh, the internal temperature around 162 ish as it's approaching 165 I will grab my thermo pen and check out uh, and get and double check that temperature so we'll bring you back Okay, so our meter thermometer is showing just over 160. So if that's accurate, carryover, we'll take it up to 165. But I do want to check and make sure. So I'm going to use my uh, thermopen. If you don't have a thermopen and you cook outside a lot, they are invaluable. So I don't know if I'll get this all on camera just because of the awkwardness of it, so, but we'll try. Okay, looks awesome. So. Uh, 164, so really, uh, really close. So I thought I'd uh, show you this turkey. I just brought it in uh, literally like two minutes ago. Um, it looks great. I'm really happy with it. I'm especially pleased with the temperature. It's right at 165 in the uh, uh, medius part of the breast. It's about 177 in the thigh, which is great uh, temperature for the dark meat on a, on a turkey or a chicken. Wings look great uh, having tucked them back. Um, one thing I should have mentioned earlier is I hope you notice the uh, the turkey legs are being held there and that's the way the, the turkey came from the butcher. So they used the skin of the turkey to hold them in place. If your turkey doesn't have that, you're going to want to use some butcher's twine and tie them together. Uh, much like the wings, they'll cook more even, uh, they won't get burned. Turkey legs look great. I'm really looking forward to carving this, but I'm definitely going to let it sit here. And by the way, I'm not going to tent it. Right now, the skin feels pretty good. Uh, if you were to tent it, the steam under there would soften the skin. So with uh, turkey and chicken, I, I really don't like to do that. So I'm just going to leave it sitting just like this. 
Uh, you want to leave it sitting for at least 20 to 30 minutes, but I'm going to leave it sit a lot longer. Oh, and also uh, the other thing I'll point out real quick is the meter thermometer that's in there, which by the way, did great today. Uh, I do recommend these. They're not cheap, uh, honestly, but uh, to have a completely wireless uh, uh, thermometer probe that will tell you the meat temperature as well as the ambient temperature, uh, this end will will tell the ambient temperature of, of your cooker. Um, it, it is a nice feature for sure. It's a nice uh, thermometer, uh, works pretty well. There are a few quirks with regard to connectivity, but honestly, once you figure them out, uh, I haven't had any trouble with them. Uh, but what I wanted to bring you back and say here real quick is that I'm leaving that thermometer in. If I were to pull that out right now, it would just start pumping the internal juices out of that uh, breast and you don't want that. So I'm going to leave it in until uh, until I'm ready to cut it. So at least 30 minutes and probably longer. See you soon. Okay, so I started carving this turkey and realized I hadn't turned the camera on. So better late than never. Uh, I've got a, the uh, two drumsticks off. So uh, we're going to go from here. Uh, I also realized I didn't have a big enough cutting board to really do this well here at the camp. So we're doing what we have to do with foil just so we don't make a giant mess. So in order to do the breast, I'm just going to find the edge of that breastbone and cut straight down one side of it. Okay, and then... Cut straight into it so the cuts meet and pull the uh, the entire breast off. Now some people like to cut slices right off of the breast and if that's your thing, go for it. But I think it's much better to take this piece and cut slices of it. Um, you kind of go against the grain that way. It's much more tender and much better to eat in my opinion. So I'm going to do now the other side. And just do the exact same thing. Of the thigh pieces here, and I've got uh, some of the breast. I'm going to save the drumsticks for my kids. So we'll try the thigh piece first. I love poultry thigh, chicken or turkey. Uh, could not be any more juicy. Super soft. It's outstanding. And I have a feeling the breast is going to be the same. The breast is the hardest thing on a turkey to make really nice, in my opinion. This is why we brine turkeys. So good. All right, well, I don't have a lot more I can say about this. Grab a pit barrel cooker and hang a turkey. It's so easy, so simple. Sort of set it and forget it. Please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it here at Buckeye Barbecue. Thanks again for watching and look for my next turkey video. Sometime in the next few weeks, we're going to, I think we'll spatchcock one and throw it on the pellet grill. So totally different uh, cooker type, totally different way to cook it, and we'll see how it does. I'm going to have another piece of turkey. Thanks, everybody. All right, you going to try Daddy's turkey? All right. Happy Thanksgiving, Daisy. The good stuff? You approve? Did you even chew it? All right. I'm glad you liked it.